What up, gangsters? We're here for a very special fireside chat, an event wrap up after party fireside chat. It's gonna be fucking tight. Um, I'm Mike Mason, your host. Been blowing glass since 2013 and covering our industry since 2016, 2017. I've had the honor of, of covering a lot of events and learning with a lot of my heroes and uh, sharing that with you guys out there. Thanks to everybody who tuned in. I'd like to take a second and introduce some homies who are with me. Uh, my co-host on Fireside Chat, the lovely Carrie Strope. Hey, all. <laughs> Glad to be here. Hell yeah. Excellent. Thank, <laughs> thanks for being here with us, Carrie. Um, and then, man, we do have a special guest who is, who is part of this event, the Functional Art Movement. This is the homie Dave coming at us. In hey, how y'all doing? Yeah, yep. Um, Dave, do do you have a title with with fam? Um, I dude, I know you're like the point man, the fixer, the every everything to everybody. That is, what is the? Well, as far as what I would do for fam, a um, little bit of everything. Did a lot of the social media stuff. Um, that's where I was focused on a lot from from home base. Um, but as far as uh, the show itself went, as far as organizing, I did a lot with the. Uh, with the flame off, uh, talking to the artists, getting the artists together. We had a, a big long, you know, X group going where we just kind of worked everything out, rules, time slots, all that. Um, uh, we also did, I, I did a lot of the, all, well, pretty much all the emceeing at the event and running a lot of stuff with the auction and the raffles. Um, and of course, at the same time, we had a huge ABR booth. So uh, that took up a lot of my time setting up and helping um, some of our other employees who we brought to the show who don't normally do shows, so helping them out, uh, catching them up on how everything goes around the booth. Uh, I was pretty much just a multitasker. <laughs> it's pretty all right. much all over the place. Well, good stuff, man. Um, so there, I, man, there's a lot we could talk about with this show. Um, man, it was a, it was a, an incredible social experience. Um, I don't know how it was out on the floor so much because I was focused on the demos, but. Man, sure. um, the competition was incredible. Um, I know you guys raised over thirteen thousand for the local Humane Society. Could you tell them just sure a did. little about that? It's so cool. Yeah, man, it's something we're really proud of. You know, we're really proud of uh, you know the community of artists who came together to make that happen. I mean, honestly, and sponsors sponsors threw down hard. The, the prize packages were crazy. You know, there's you know about ten thousand dollars worth of GTTs, Bethlehem's gift certificates, color, all kinds of stuff from sponsors. Um, everybody threw down. So GTT, Bethlehem, uh, Bonnie at uh, North Jersey Diamond Wheel, uh, Blast Shield, and uh, of course, ABR and World Batch, we both, you know, we put in there on prize packs too. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that was uh, that was something that we wanted to do here um, as far as giving back to the community that hosts our, our show. Um, and some, I think, is, uh, you know, you see other things like the Michigan Project and what Craig does down in Austin with Armadillo. It's just um, it's a great thing to do. It's something we can do. Um, and, yeah, so the artists threw down, man, threw down hard. Uh, $13,000, and we still have, like, four or five pieces to sell. So. Oh, wow. Awesome. Super this. stoked, yeah. That's really great. Um, well, excellent. That's that. That's man. That is something really to be proud of, and it is so nice to when the community comes together to do stuff like that. Um, shoot, if guys, if you have any questions for Dave about this event, um, lay them out. He'll be with us. Uh, but man, mm -hmm. I it's I I say we go ahead and pop that thing off. Um, yeah, let's do it. Cool. So, guys, tonight we have some footage from the the competition. Um, a number of artists are, are going to be in this. We've got Freak, uh, who did the incredible uh, Freak and Fam Party. That's a whole nother discussion. And, sure, absolutely. Uh, a whole lot of beers. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. ooh, man, that place was packed. That was incredible. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's we have no a, footage of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Brett Ratner pops this thing <laughs> off, and he's going to gonna show a, a new method of encasing disc opals. It's similar to ones we've seen before, but with a, a pretty clever twist. So check that out. Um, that's coming up ver first. Snuck some footage of the homie Josh Mazayan here, uh, melting beer bottles. Um, Terry Sharp making an incredible few marble. Um, it, it, it looks like some kind of uh, abstract flower with fume. It's really incredible. 
Um, snuck some footage of Windstar in there. And then we've also got, um, gosh, who am I spacing on here? Was that everybody? I think it might have been everybody. Shoot. Guys, um, th this is Madison, Wisconsin, uh, where this event was held. It's it's super beautiful. It's situated on the water. There's like a technical term for this that I'm forgetting now. It's like an ithemus or something like that. Where it's not quite a peninsula, but it's trying. Um, <laughs> it, but no, really beautiful. Everybody was out in the water this whole time that we were there. Um, yeah, and I I took some time to just pop up. This was held at a at a venue called the Moana Terrace, and this is the terrace itself here. Um, it's a beautiful city. It's kind of one of these OG cities where they had to make it look like Washington, D.C. or whatever. I'm not certain why they did all that, but my AP history is failing me. Um, but anyways, this is the terrace itself. It has gardens. It's freaking beautiful. Here's, here's some of the gardens. I took a second to get all David Attenborough on y'all, but, uh, it's <laughs> freaking gorgeous. It's limestone in the Midwest, and by the way, that's why everything looks like that. <laughs> okay, all right, I got you. Yeah, we're still... All the limestone courthouses and stuff are big here in the Midwest. It's a thing. Okay. Yeah. They were like, fuck it, we're going to go full-on Greek. Um, yeah, and, yeah. So here's the other side of the terrace view. I was going a little time-lapse crazy, but it's it was a beautiful day, and it's a beautiful city. Um, I think the Monona Terrace is a Frank Lloyd Wright uh, design. I'll back that. Yeah, it is. It, 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 uh, yeah, it is. It's actually something he designed, and then they never built it and put the plan into action until after he had passed away. No oh, wow. Way after. So, like, the city had the plan and never built it, never built it, never built it, and then years after he passed, they used the design. Hmm. That's, that's interesting. I did yeah, see some of that stuff place. around, but... Yeah, and then this is like the walk from the hotel uh, over to FAM, and then from there it's an elevator jump away, and boom, there you are. So here's Scott Ratner, you guys. This is just, this is hardly a, even a taste of what, of his incredible work, uh, his, his pieces yeah, are like. Yeah, his piece was, his piece was awesome for the charity. Yeah, really, really good. But as you can see here, guys, he took this blow tube and he made, he just kind of flared a section uh, so that he has this kind of pocket that had a bigger diameter. And the trick here is that he wants to let that opal stick where the diameter changes. So you get a blow tube that it almost fits into. And then flare a section of the top so it fits in the back here. And it's, it's just chilling in the cut. And now he's going to close this down. And what this does is it allows this pocket to stay open. And uh, I think it's a neat twist on like what we've seen AKM do. Like he would, he would let it get he would tack it to the wall or whatever so it kind of has this ability to float around it but he's just fully ensuring that that this thing stays open to air exchange as it goes out really really lets it stick it in that place where the diameter changes so that it always stays in the pocket it's not like bridged or whatever but it's it knowing that it get it would get stuck in that opening and then flaring out ahead of it allows you to really keep it stuck there and I think that really facilitates this thing condensing cleanly around it. And he's going to come out and give it a little suck to get the last bit. Like we saw AKM do the same thing. But I like this method a lot. I think this is very clever. This, this is, if I were going to encase a disc, this is just how I would do it after seeing him do it like this. And then here's, yeah, where he gave it the suck. You know, speaking of suck, you guys, don't fuck with that $5 IPA from Trader Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is Jake. Okay, just quick, quick tip. Good one. Uh, that was too good to be true. Too good to be true. Anyways. $5, six, six pack, that is? It is, $5 yeah. It's four ninety nine for a six pack, but it literally tastes oh, like got... they took like a real IPA and then like mixed it half and half with Bud Light yeah. or something. It's terrible. Yeah, it can't be good at that price. <laughs> I had high hopes, man. I really it's did. My IPA yeah. go to for for guests that aren't discerning. <laughs> it's an IPA. You'll love it. There you go. You're an IPA man now. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so yeah, that bad boy is fully encased in glass now, very cleanly. And then he's going to do what uh, they call skinning. And I've seen some people fully pull it out like a stringer, but he's doing it in a bit more controlled fashion. <clears throat> I like that. And yeah, shout, shout outs uh, to the homie here. I always want to call him Brett Ratner because of the famous uh, Hollywood type person. <laughs> but it's Scott Ratner. And he's an awesome yeah, dude. That was the first time meeting Scott. Yeah, he's a really nice guy. Yeah, totally. Yeah, talent. same. Yeah. Great. yeah, it was a real nice cat. Here we go. He came get... in last minute, too. It's great. Oh, I'm really? Having... Nice. Here we go, another skinning the other side. And now he's got down to the controlled amount of glass that he wants. Some of these cats will use this technique who, um, like Justin Carter, for example, he, he had, or he's, he probably still does them, but he has pendants where the opals are placed in very intricate um, patterns and arrangements and such. And, you know, I've, I've seen him do a bit of that opal work and it's, you know, he's skinning them down to virtually nothing and that allows him to place exactly where he wants, you know, and then it all cooks back in because it has just enough borrow around it to be like, all right, I'm getting in, getting in place. And here he's done like an axis switch or whatever and getting this uh, disc essentially like in the right orientation that he wants. And Linda Cook back. Just taking his time, preparing this thing cleanly. It's going to go on, you know, a rig that's pretty expensive. His work is really nice. And it commands a proper value. So, you can see him here just taking his time. Look at that bad boy. Now it's sitting really, really proper. Oriented the right way with the lens ahead of it. Look at that thing. is already blinging up there in the corner. Speak of the devil, uh, Dopals, one of the sponsors. Man, he's... Isaac is the home. He runs that. Nice guy. Has great opals. Griffin Glass, another sponsor in the house. All of these companies, you see there, guys, and y'all pitching in on Torch Pass really make it possible for me to get to so many shows. We're looking at virtually every major event. I'm going to go do Pipe Classic this year. That's a new event for me and just kind of a dream event. It's up in a, not the cheapest area of the country and one I've always wanted to do all these years. And this year I'm going to get to do it because of these sponsors and because of you guys pitching in. There's no two ways about great, that. Man. Yeah, I really appreciate it. So, Okay, so there it is. Got that thing a little backing, and now it's really backed and facing forward. Looking good. But yeah, I thought that was a fun bit. It's tonight, you know, it's... Um, a lot of these pieces we filmed, we filmed a bunch of stuff, man. There's so many awesome people there over a couple of days that we had the opportunity to film. Um, me and Carrie left town and we covered a veterinarian show. Uh, HVO sells these systems to, to vets and uh, they, they tank up them uh, dogs and cats. So in any event, um, there hasn't been much time to edit some of the longer segments. So I was just kind of jumping through and finding stuff that I thought you guys would dig. And, you know, man, getting to see the way that this opal is prepared really, really properly. I thought that was a nice way to pop things off. All right. And then here's the homie Josh Mize. And as we saw, I removed a label from the bottle, and then I I, I saved y'all like three to whatever many minutes of this beer bottle. He's going to sculpt this bad boy into like a dragon. And I thought this was really fun. This wasn't his demo piece or any or nothing. Him and Kevin Beecher, the homie, who you guys have seen do some beer bottle sculpting as well from uh, an episode years ago. Um... They were trading these things. If people brought him a fresh beer, they would just let him take one of the sculpted ones. It was a pretty fucking awesome racket. Those guys would bet <laughs> for 24 hours if you let them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
They drink that Mick Ultra. Notice that. So yeah. They can drink yeah. Like 50 they do, of them. yes. Exactly. <laughs> totally, man. Yeah, no. It is very much like uh, water in many ways. Extremely low carb. So, yeah, taking his time here, putting a bunch of uh, dank heat, as it were, into the neck of this bottle. And that's pretty much, you know, your limit here. You're not going to want to go deeper in there unless you've got, unless you're doing something out of a furnace or whatever, you know. Um, but this is fun. So, like, leave, leaving that, the opening, you know, firm enough to do this. And here it is. Just a, It's a different timing. This thing stays... Stays molten really long. And then there we go. So, step one, or whatever. <laughs> it really you was. Know, I used to do that. We What's that? If, if you ever have a booth, like a craft show or anything of that nature, man, you start doing this, it's a, uh, you'll get a crowd. It works. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's really yeah. easy. It's super easy. It can, you know, once you do it a couple of times, you pretty much figure out how the glass moves. And, after yep. that, you can pull, you know, a little boost or something real easy or go dragon like these guys do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. You me. <laughs> you gotta, yeah, exactly. So he's got a tungsten pick here, you guys. And then he's giving it this little twist at the end to, to get it out. Uh, Kevin actually likes to give it a little brush in the, of heat to help remove the tool as well. That That's Kevin's trick, but Josh is a little more bold. Um so yeah, just giving it heat, spot heat now and poking out these things. I do pretty much on all these. Beer bottle sculpting, man. A lot of fun. And this, If nothing else, you can get yourself a lot of free beers this way. Absolutely. And then it's a lot of free glass, too. Totally. <laughs> All right, and I think Harry's gonna like grab the the you know p pull out like the the mouth of the dragon or whatever by grabbing the the lip you know and kind of holding it firm and then pulling up and out. It's pretty cool. It's a fun move. And you know these guys have mentioned you know sometimes these things survive, sometimes they don't. What are you gonna do? You know. You don't leave anybody with any false expectations, and there you go. Look at the timing on this. Could you imagine if this were Boro? That thing would have frozen up on you and stuck to the tool and all that. <laughs> Just a different timing, though. Yeah, really cool. Yep. Made it look easy. Right? Yeah, yeah, totally. I'm going in for even more detail now that it's opened up. Hell yeah. So yeah, like nice. I said... Not not part of the competition, but just something really fun that was going on. I thought you guys would dig. And here's the fucking here's freak. Um, man, we're I'm gonna show you how he took a, a fill that out little bubble and turned it into a carb cap with some really really cool tubulation techniques. But this was ahead of that in the footage, and I was like, ah, let's let the homie see what he's doing, man. Look at this sick piece, you guys. They did yeah. so many cool things in the assembly of this, and this will be a really fun show. Um, that that will probably, you know, it just needs a ton of editing. But look at this, like the way, look at the way he he's shaping this post here, giving it a nice like kind of flatten, and this is what it is. There's so many of these little moves where it starts with a little sloppier end or whatever it is, but then you got to clean it up. And then that's kind of the style that he does on these things. They've got like a post and then it raises up. And that's what the joint attaches to. It looks really cool and really clean. And there he's like, he opened that up and he's using that glass almost to form that lip. You know, that's going to form the spacing between where the joint is. Just a super little taste of that before. But now he's going to do the cap. And this is really neat. This is fun, fun techniques. 
Um, now he's got this bubble that's he's decorated. I think he surface drew it actually. I, I don't even think he did any flip on this or anything. It's just for these smaller caps and stuff, you know. It's just it might be a tiny little drawing. He does it all in one go without having to flip it. Um, that's just a guess. <clears throat> but either way, he's got this bubble, um, and he's just adding solid glass to it. Now, um, not to like toot my own horn or anything, but <laughs> no, it's, um, but if you guys, some of y'all have been with us for a minute and, and there's an episode, uh, where I did like bubble cap methodologies and I was showing a few different ways to make the nozzle. This is kind of a twist on, on one of those where I showed how to add the, the solid glass and pull it out to a little nozzle. Um, he's added the solid glass here and now he's going to kind of roll it in the Marver to make this solid because he wants, it's not like a little uh, conical nozzle. It's like a little, just a little tiny tube extension. So he's rolling it in, in the Marver and blowing through it to make a piece of tubing with that profile that he wants. And uh, I thought that was really neat. So, man, that technique right there will allow you to add a little tiny properly shaped nozzle on anything you can make round. And that, you know, any type of decorative technique that you can reduce, you know, to a smaller scale and condense it back to a little bubble, boom, now it's a carb cap. Um, I thought this was a, a just a really neat way of adding. He's going to do a similar type of thing somewhere between this and a, uh, and like a coil pot on the other end here now. And I thought it's really clever. And this right there, that right there was like a purposefully wax seal. It's strong enough to survive what he's going to do next, but... Not so strong that it's going to not be knockoffable or whatever. That doesn't go perfectly, but you'll see. Um, and here, so here he's going to open this up and get enough of a, a little bit more of a diameter here to facilitate what he's going to do next, which is essentially coil pot the other end off of it. And like I said, I thought this was just so neat. Like this technique allow, would allow you to make this style cap or your own whatever literally out of any bubble without having to, to you know grab little tiny diameters of tubing and make them all ahead of time and all that and that this this sort of um live building of the tubing or whatever uh it featured in in his assembly process a lot you know we would take like a a decor a disc that he'd already flipped or whatever and then just start building off of it to make the next connecting segment or whatever it would be it was really neat um, all right, so here he looked like he needed to get his blow hose on there. He was like, oh, shit, I don't have air pressure. It's no big deal. And this is just like a coil pot now where he's got to condense this thing back and then shape it. It looks pretty sloppy right now, but it's all good. All that matters is that it stays hollow and now it'll condense it back to a little tiny bubble and it'll even itself out. And that's the same thing, like, you know, the coil pie. You just gotta blow it out and condense it back a few times until it comes back to the right, uh, until all the walls are even and all that. And here he's doing the same thing on the other side, just using the, the marver to kind of make it into a little tiny piece of tubing. And he's probably puffing into it. Once he really gets it rolling in there, he's probably giving it a little puff. You know, letting the outside walls cool from the marver and such. And then giving a puff on the inside. And that really forces it. It's like pressure from all sides. Forcing it to be even. Not forcing, but pushing it in the right direction. So yeah, like I said, I, I thought this was a super cool technique, man. Make something a bubble. And then do something like this to it. And, you know, add, add a nozzle and a, and a top. Really fun and fast way of making a cap out of, you know, any type of decorative section. Do a little fumed up honeycomb, whatever. Yeah, it, there's a million ways to decorate a bubble. It's the easiest thing to do is make decorate something and condense it back to a little ball. So, this technique is fun for all. <laughs> Mike the Bard. Yeah. Um, but, okay, so here he's opening this up, and it's really just a flare move. 
I think on like the the ones that have the double Maria, he might uh, shape it in first, you know, and add a little bit more. Like roll it into like a V blade or something on the inside, so it's got like what looks like a Maria, and then flare the rest just like this. It really goes to show you that that he condensed that thing back enough to even the wall out to in, mm -hmm. you know because it's flaring out so evenly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And he's going to grab a paddle and, and really reinforce the the shape there. It's pretty, it's close, but any Maria, it's best if you, you know, you can go in on some sort of surface and hit both sides, you know. Even the best cats are doing that, so it's like no shame in that game. Can always be a little bit cleaner if you take that time to tool the Maria afterwards or whatever flare, whatever it'll be. Even the top of bowls, whatever, give it that little boop, boop. Little little touch with the flat surface, and it just makes it look so much cleaner. And then here, they like tapped it, and that thing, the handle came off because it wasn't a good seal, but that was on purpose. But it left just a little bit of clear, and that's okay. These things happen. He just went in there and spot heated it, and then pulled that away, gave a little tap on the side of the marver there. Boom. Done deal. Ideally, it would have just all popped off clean and we'd have just given it a polish, but yeah, so that was Freak. Shout outs to Freak, man, and shout outs yeah, for the incredible party. Holy hell. Yeah, now, that was, yeah, that was great. great party every year, man. It was, it's really how this whole thing got started, the whole show we did. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and guys, so here, I thought this was really neat. So check it out. Terry. There's a part that you're going to have to use your imaginations for here that he got to this point. But if you look at this tubing, you guys, uh, I believe that he fumed a clear blank. Maybe removed some of the silver or added gold on certain parts of it. Whatever you want to do. And, he gave, and then he striped it. So there's, each of these stripes have a different concentration of fume underneath, you know. That's just one approach here. You could do, you know, you could fume half of it with one thing, half with the other, half, whatever. There's all these ways to generate a fume-based uh, line tubing by striping. And that's what he's got here, right? Now he's going to take this little section and uh, essentially, like, it's almost like, if you guys know, like a fumicello or whatever, where they take the scallop tubing and fume it inside and condense it and then twist it up or whatever and then push a Maria. It's like that, but it stays completely straight the whole time. And what happens is all these different lines of fume kind of bloom out together and create this incredible abstract um, effect that looks kind of like a fume flower or something. It's very beautiful. You will see it in at in at the end. Um, and yeah, but that's what he started with. Was you could see it's all straight lines. It's hard to see because it's fume right now, right? But you could see it's a bunch of different lines of fume. Some of it looks to be gold. There's probably lines of silver in the parts that look less distinct. And uh, so it's just a bunch of different fumes. And he's keeping it straight the whole way that he goes. And here now, he's g g just getting this this blank nice and even to the to the diameter and everything that he wants, and really getting it ready to push this. Essentially a Maria that hopefully doesn't trap any air or anything and kind of forces these straight lines of fume against each other on both sides and forces them to bundle up. And then that thing gets pulled down a bit later, almost almost imploded a bit. I don't want to call it an implosion, but you know, it, it gets reshaped a bit but with that that effect. And there it is. So look, now it's a Maria. And it's essentially that whole little hollow section just became solid. And here he's even pushing it against the, the marver there to kind of reinforce that. So now all these lines of the fume in there are now in this solid disc. And he's going to back it and make this bad boy a marble. And you'll see there's a couple of them on there. This shit is hot. This is this is something I, th I, th I really thought you guys might like to see and, and play around with. 
You can see on the end of that how it's like there's these little termination points. So you could tell that he fumed a tube and striped it or whatever. That's the tell there or whatever. Not like he's trying to hide it or nothing. We just I think he brought that that tubing already made, so there wasn't an opportunity to see that. Carrie actually filmed him making this entire awesome Sherlock that has multiple marble spinner sections. Shit's tight. And there are just a ton of marble attachments on it as well. So there, yeah, and this is this is where that thing is really kind of condensing down. And this is where I feel like it's kind of almost imploding a bit as it goes from like this disc to something a little bit more round and condenses and the material is just kind of drawing in and pulling around and some crazy shit's happening. But it's really just, see, it's, it's really just being condensed. But that's a lot of what an implosion or whatever you want to call it is. If you started mashing it now and stuff, I bet you'd get more of a compression effect. Those terms are oft debated, but I like to stay pretty agnostic to that whole thing about whether it's solid or hollow and it's a compression or an implosion. I'm talking about when an implosion is literally the glass is being pulled in from one way because the glass is getting pulled down the other way, you know, internally. Um, that to me, and, and that happens on hollow or solid. Debatable. Exactly, yeah, totally. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding, yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> Debatable. Here we go, giving that thing a little uh, a session in the rounder there. All right, so you, we're starting to see a bit of this effect that's happened here. It's hard It's hard to see the, the true nature of what's happened, but... It looks fucking awesome, and they just they just look so awesome and unique. Each one has its own effects to see. As you can see now, look at this. Okay, it really. Do you guys see what's happened there? It's like it's just starting to get to the point where you can really see how it's like drawn out into this thing that looks like a fucking like the Jimi Hendrix ghost flower. I don't know. It's fucking beautiful. And I think that's because it went from that disc, you know, and drew down on that front surface, you know. When anything condenses, you know, it can go from flat to, to round on the face, so it, it draws it in on the, the front end. You can do that with milli chips and shit, too. If you just start working a milli chip right, the image, what happens? It shrinks and goes in on the front. Same thing there. And yeah, now I think he's going to give it a backing. Looks like some kind of cobalt there, which is always a always an excellent choice for backing anything with fume. Indeed. And he's just slathering it on. But in the flame with a lot of heat, so there's no air getting trapped there or anything. It's just gathering against the marble, you know? And this is going to be attached, so he's going to make it a marble, but it it doesn't necessarily need to be perfect on the back end, because it's going to get put onto a post that connects, so he's setting it up to be posted up. I'm going to mash it down a little bit so the color color went out more to the edges, I guess. Here we go. Put her in the rounder. And now it's like optically it curves in towards the, the backing color. So it's like all that fume almost almost makes it look like it ends up popping out of a pocket of that, even though it was added to the surface after. Yeah. That thing is really cool. You'll see it in, in a moment. I was cleaning up that uh that punny there. And I think he's adding the post now. This is what'll be connected to like the, the pipe or whatever. There we go. 
using the Marva there too to, to give that a nice tubing shape. Very similar to what Freak was doing. He was just using that to give it that outside shape and then blow, you know, tubing through it. So it's comes a little section of tubing. And then there you go. You can kind of see it there. There's one of them and there's even another one on the other side with a totally different effect. And yeah, I think you can see like there's like definitely gold and silver in there and stuff. It, it's hard to see exactly what's going on. I, I wish I'd had the opportunity to find some footage where he just like showed it off. I don't think that footage exists though. He was just working. He was in a competition. One time to show off. And um, yeah, I didn't have time to get into the footage of the finished pieces. So. Anyways, that there'll was that some, technique. Oh, well, go ahead, man. I was going to say that there will be some great pictures coming of all the pieces. We had a guy shoot all the all the pieces that were in the flame off Excellent. that were in the event. So, so yeah, that'll be. Love it. And then here, up. guys, um, he's going to add some kind of, they're, I, I don't know if you want to call them horns or whatever, but they're, they're curved, you know, tapered extensions. And I thought you guys would dig that how he approached this because he's got this section of uh, solid. It looks like he sleeved some black or whatever and made it uh, into a, even more. Um, but what he's doing is he's he's he needs like four of them, and he's gonna make them all on the same piece at once. And this is similar to how I, I know we've seen some footage of Salt doing doing a similar thing when he wants to add a bunch of attachments. He'll pull the segment out of of solid and taper off each one so that um, this allows him to really visually see before he goes that each piece, you know, starts from the same uh, amount of material, has the same taper. Um, it, it, it really allows him to make sure they match before they go on, as opposed to adding some arbitrary amount and then having to remove material or, you know, or hope that they match. Uh, doing it this way allows him to make sure that they match the whole fucking way. So... I thought you guys might like to see the approach there. So he pulled that section down to a really even uh, piece of solid uh, material. And now he's going to segment it into what he needs for these little horns or whatever. And I just thought this was a really clever approach. I was just, I was really going through kind of putting together a buffet of techniques. Man, if there's one thing that Madison is really known for, other than that, that beautiful <laughs> waterfront, man, it's some goddamn awesome food and drink. They know how to fucking eat there. And everything's so close there to the hotel and the and the yep. show. It's so handy. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's some amazing yeah. Yeah, amazing restaurants all right in the area. Um but I've anyways seen kind of cheese curds. I thought it was uh <laughs> yeah, I thought it was fitting to have a, a buffet of techniques. <laughs> and yeah, so I think he's gonna maybe start in the middle and then segment those two out as well. And there's some little gunk in the sleeve or whatever, but that doesn't matter when it's not hot, you know, sort of deal. We all know what we all know how that goes. It's just the sort of thing where it's like, don't worry about it. That's not going to show up in the finished piece. So yeah, segmenting the middle, and getting getting these bad boys ready to to be pulled out into all four of them in one piece. I'm gonna step away for just a moment, but yeah, I thought this was really cool, and and we're sneaking in. Um. Yeah, be right back. It must be beer refill time. <laughs> I'm getting there too. Yeah, I know, right? I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> Hopefully my runner appears with more. <laughs> so yeah, you guys, um, if you're not already subscribers, Hit that subscribe button to the Torch Talk channel. All Mike's new content from Glass Central Station is appearing here. I think he said we're headed to Mount here shortly to film a bunch more footage. And he's still got lots of footage from fam. So if you hit subscribe and uh, notifications, you'll be sure to join us on Tuesday nights, 10 Central, 11 Eastern. I've returned. Yes, we can hear. <laughs> <laughs>
yeah, look at this. And now, now look at how cool this thing looks. It's like all these little segments are all really even. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, and that just facilitates adding even even attachments. I really, I, th I thought this was a was a fun thing to share. And then we're actually going to get to see him uh, adding them. And this piece at this point is pretty much done and just sick as hell. And we've got um, some of the, the parts of it came pre-prepared because the, this was one of those competitions where they're, they're very liberal with what they allow the homies to bring. And that's a good thing. It makes for really, really awesome pieces. It's like DFO. Some of those are like that. Others, Champs is much more strict. And, you know, I like filming that because we generally get to see the entire piece from start to finish short of, you know, they allow them to bring a little box of prep or whatever. But, uh, anyways, uh, for the band, this was like a four hour or something build, right? I forget three or four hour blocks, Dave, three, three hours. Yeah. And he built this absolutely amazing, uh, Sherlock that has like multiple, like I said, marble spinner sections and man, they were hot. It was, uh, and it Terry was... did, he was one of the guys who did, I feel like the most it's at what... the event, you know, he did it. He, he made a lot of components there. Oh yeah. Yeah. He was working continuously making all mm -hmm. these different marble attachments and dike row flat section attachments. It's, it's a lot. You'll see it shortly guys. It's fucking awesome. Speaking of hot, big us to Paragon, put all those kilns in for the competition. Mm -hmm. They're really great about that stuff. I know Carrie, when she teaches at the Beat Expo, uh, they provide classes or provide kilns for the classroom and a number of other classrooms there. They're yeah. dope. Full disclosure, I think they're coming on as a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> they their, their new kiln with a built-in bluetooth speaker. yeah they got a, a 710 model with the built-in bluetooth speaker it's pretty fucking sweet it's really just like a pocket that has a speaker in it but it's paving the way for future ones with a subwoofer and the whole nine yards <laughs> here's a stereo system that also has a kiln in it yeah, but you know, um, shout outs to the homie Carson Pinella, Cap Glass. If you guys don't know who I'm talking about, definitely uh, look up his channel, CAP, Cap Glass. Um, he has a build where he makes a lunchbox kiln. And it's like a little tiny kiln. Uh, and it has a fucking built in Bluetooth uh, speaker setup as well. And it's like a, just like a little tiny prep kiln that he uses. And he's a super awesome dude. We've had him on the show. I don't know. I'm getting out of out of out of, out of line here because I should talk to him about this. But man, I was just I was thinking about him just recently, maybe even earlier today. I don't remember. But I was like, man, I want uh, I want to see if we can get Carson to do some kind of show or something, either just to join me or it's like he's the kind of guy I'd love to just like, yo, man, you should have your own show when, when we can film it. And uh, Caps World. I don't know. Anyways. He needs to talk more. And guys, so you can see some of these attachments that have that technique. And it, they're just fucking beautiful. Um, all four of those attachments on the side, those marbles, are with that same technique. Just the smaller versions. and They just they look so unique and abstract and beautiful. I thought that was a really fun thing to see. And here's where he's attaching these, you guys, if, if, if you hadn't noticed. Oh, hell yeah. Did you link up his channel, Carrie? Thank you. I did, yes. Excellent. Yeah, guys, Cap, Cap Glass is awesome. And that video where he where he, the, the thing plays music, he's got playing some, like, funk music thing, you know? It's like... <laughs> it has lights, too. It has lights and everything. So, yeah. It's like... I, I Sometimes I just play that video when I need a smile. It's it it just makes me laugh, man. He's so happy with it, and it's like so funny. He's playing little funk music and shit. It's it's great. And then it starts bouncing around too, because he's got hydraulics on it. Mm hmm. Yes, I. That's my favorite part of the video. Yeah, it's good for hot glass and hydraulics and <laughs> for that organic shape. 
Richard Hazer in the chat. Good to yeah. see you, homie. I see you calling it Dream Station 1. Is there already plans for a Dream Station 2? And we're talking about Doghouse Glass, the homie out here, y'all. Amazing spot that he's working yeah, at. Yeah, those guys are awesome over there. I mean, we see him a lot over at ABR. There's good cats. Excellent. Yeah, Richard, have you? did you just slip? Did you let it slip, baby? Is there already a Dream Station 2? Um, I'm gonna say my guess is the Instagram Dream Station was taken, so they did Dream Station One. Pfft. Whatever. I'm <laughs> opening a franchise, Dream Station Two. In Lincoln. <laughs> yeah, Lincoln. <laughs> Coming at you. Yeah. I, I bet Bob would franchise it. Yeah. The little dog coming at you from Lincoln. There you go. <laughs> and so guys he's adding these attachments um and then the next thing that's going to happen though uh, is that he's going to kind of let gravity he's going to put some dang heat into these things and kind of like gravity droop them all evenly i thought it was a fun technique some artists would really like to have a handle on that you know and then clean them up he's getting them cleaned up the way he wants and then letting that heat soak in and then letting gravity curve them really nicely. I thought that was fun, too. Terry's the real star of the show here tonight. I, I uh, found two really cool things that, that kind of fit the bill for the evening of, you know, the That's glass. perfect, man. Yeah, <laughs> glass buffet. I really thought it would be. There's 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 all these longer segments and, and, and things that we'll get to in time. There'll be quite a few things to share from this event. And Dave, thank you again for having me out, man. I really appreciate being able to capture oh, and share okay. this. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just another good thing. I mean, if you guys are tuning in late, this competition, y'all, raised already 13000 for the local Humane Society with more pieces to go. And just the fact that we also now get to learn something, maybe be a little inspired, tuck a little something in the toolbox from it. And that means a lot, man. I really appreciate you having me out to do that for the community. And yeah, man, fuck yeah. Well, we appreciate it too, man. It's great having this footage. And, uh, you know, this is great seeing a guy like Terry, who's a homie. He's one of our Indiana boys. Oh, nice. Um, you know, he's, yeah. He's a great guy, man. It's good, good seeing him on here. Yeah. So this is great. I didn't, I didn't get to watch a lot of the glass blowing. I was so busy running around doing so much stuff during the show. So this is awesome. Oh yeah, cheers, man. Well, that's good yeah. to hear. Yeah, yeah. We'll it's... have you anytime, man. I love it. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, it was. It really was a great time. This man, it was. Uh, you know, the just the social aspect of it, man. Getting to kick it with so many like-minded people, and it was just a yeah. really good vibe. Like, I don't know what they. I, I'm a citizen of the universe, y'all. That's the way I sincerely think of myself. But, like, um, there are there really is something to, like, that Midwest, you know, nice, that, that Midwest thing, man, where people are really genuinely friendly and, and not, not into superficial stuff in general. You know, I don't know. I want to get, don't want to get too deep about it. Everywhere it has its charms. But one mm -hmm. of the Midwest is that people are fucking genu generally genuine as fuck and awesome. And I, I felt like that was the vibe here at this show. It was just yeah, a lot of just, real good. You feel that chill slower, it's more, well, it's just slowed down from, from what you would normally be used to at a big, big event, you know, in a big city. Uh, just, just real mellow. Everybody's, you know, mostly together. There's you no, know, you get distracted in the bigger cities and bigger shows. So it's like, you know, right. Get, right. I feel like I hung out with everybody. Yeah, great. totally, man. Yeah. Nothing against any of those other shows. It's no, just like, damn, man, I, I can't think of another show other than maybe melt, you know, type of, but melts, not a melts, right. a whole special it's melts a fucking summer can. It's a different, yeah, it a different is, ball man. game. It's the best. I, I can't think of a show like this where, where like most of us were like chilling in one place, having a beer at the end of the night together. Right. Yeah, yeah. it was and, totally random. It wasn't planned. Like we ran mm -hmm. into a group of folks at the Great Dane, and then that, mm -hmm. you know, the next night we found the ramen joint because we ran into uh, Marcel. Marcel, and yeah. Buddy. yeah, yeah, yeah. Huge <laughs> shout outs to Marcel, man. It was great seeing him out there and and him telling people about the project. That's, yeah, uh, they threw down and sponsored some coin towards the show that, and uh, did did some good stuff for us as well, man. So they're they're yeah. always always helping people out. So guys, if y'all didn't notice, he added some bridges there to really be able to work the seals. And now he can clean these things up and droop them in just the way that he wants. And uh, again, the, 
th these are the marbles, man, all over this bad boy that have that effect that we saw earlier, you know, with this line tubing that's kept straight and then Maria'd out and, you know, kind of condensed back, which allows it to kind of implode a bit and condense back in on, and especially the side that rounds out, you know, the face or whatever. And that side pulls in and just gives it that incredible effect. I thought that was so fucking cool, and I was, I was just, and and by the way, you guys, Carrie shot this part. I um, I shot Freak. Uh, I shot the stuff with Josh. I shot that Dicro stuff, but this whole segment was shot by Carrie, and it is so awesome to have her with me at these shows, man. She puts in every bit of work that I do to, you know, make sure that none of this stuff goes without being captured. And, yeah, so I just wanted to take a moment to, to acknowledge that, uh, man, that she shot the fuck out of this. It's awesome. Yeah, you guys are both up there pretty much nonstop every time I walk by. Oh, yeah, no, no, man. If the torches are on, dude, I'm, we're there. That, that, yeah, that's the that's my MO, baby. There's, I mean, you know, it's, uh, reminds me of this. I, I had a science teacher in high school, uh, Mr. Bibby. Shoutouts to Mr. Bibby. But Mr. Bibby, man, gave really terrible advice. He told me <laughs> once, uh, he said, Mike, and this is because I was like, I'd be going off to college or whatever, right? He was like, Mike, I got some advice. And I was like, yes, Mr. Bibby. And he was like, you can always make up a class, but you can never make up a party. <laughs> and I was like, oh, word? All right. And I took yeah. that shit to heart and completely yeah, fucked up my first shot at college. So that's it's true. Yeah, that's how that goes. <laughs> my advice to you guys out there is that you really have to take a balanced approach and know when to, to miss miss the class and know when to miss the party. You, you can't have it all one way, generally speaking. But anyways, the, the, the reason I bring it up, and not just because it's funny, man, it makes me laugh, dude. That guy was a dumbass. He always used to joke on his wife and shit, too. And I always used to joke back, like, this motherfucker's gonna be divorced within a couple of years. And he totally <laughs> was. He was. Totally was divorced within, like, six months. Like, <laughs> mis, mis, you know. Yeah. He also had another story about how they convinced a member of his high school or college baseball team that he had gotten AIDS. Like, from fucking a contaminated water fountain or something? It was apparently a really dumb guy. <laughs> and this dude had the worst stories. I should just stop talking about Mr. Bibby now. But <laughs> it was also kind of funny. The, the old thing is, it's like, you know, man, you can always make up a, a, a fucking party, but you can never make up a demo. That's what it made me think of, you know what I mean? Like, for real, like, and that's a bit of a joke, but, like, the, when when the homies are throwing down... The fuck? No, no, no. There's time to there's time to relax later, and that you know. That's why we have all this fucking dang footage, and we get to keep having this party, you know. So it all goes hand in hand. Yeah, man. That's but no. Nah, I mean, I'm not trying to sound like no hero or nothing. It's just that's that's, the, the, man. It's like the same thing, you know. I raised my daughter alone, uh, for like you know 17 years of her life, right? I had full custody, um. But I don't feel like no hero. I feel like the people who don't step up are the ones we should be talking about. No, nobody deserves praise for being a fucking parent. Okay? Like, everybody deserves praise for being a parent, but not not because they stepped up to do it. That's your fucking job. Um, it's when people don't step up that we gotta be like, fuck that idiot kind of deal. And it's the same thing. Like, I'm not no hero because I film this stuff. It's like... I'd just be a total asshole if I didn't. You know, it's this one. Right. right? That's what I mean. Okay, I'll wrap this up. <laughs> That's what you're there to do. Mm hmm. God, do it. Exactly. Took me a while to get there, but I'm just. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, so guys, that, I thought that was really neat. We saw him just letting gravity droop that thing. And guys, here's Windstar. You guys have seen some amazing footage of her over the years. A big shout out uh, to her always being kind about letting me put a camera in her face and over her shoulder. And I mean, that's why we have this this footage right here is because well, we've we've spent years now, you know, filming her at different competitions and events and stuff. And you know, she knows I'm not going to fuck her shit up. So, <laughs> no, but no, she really is uh, has been incredibly generous about allowing me to film her work. And uh, look at this, you guys. This is 
I remember year like, like even in the master special we she was like doing the earth and this and that. Now it is just gone into freehand. It's an incredibly tight technical drawing. Um, this you guys is an image uh, we that is meant to be flipped. So she the the outlines have been laid and she's being a little cavalier about going over them, but that's intentional. Um, so we're seeing not not a side that's meant to be cooked in and seen or anything. She's done some surface drawn stuff lately uh, that that I've shared even a little bit of, and and on the torch pass there's a whole demo of it. Uh, but this is meant to be flipped, and guys, all right. Speaking of this flip, it's like this. She did something that was totally new. Maybe I should just shut the fuck up. But uh, no, no, I'm going to tell you guys about it. It was really neat. Um, um, never mind. No, for real, guys, she has a class, actually, that's like um, along with Mama's class. And there's another class at the same spot with Hick Dog and, uh, baby, remind me. Tony Casey. And well, no, Tony's Tony's the assistant no? for that for that thing, I think. But maybe it's just a Hick Dog class and he's assisting both. Um, anyways, she has a class that's in Montrose, Colorado, right outside Denver, right where Red Rocks is. Incredibly beautiful spot. Um, I can't encourage you guys enough to take this class. I'll be out there. Um, I don't know what we're going to do yet. I actually need to talk to her at Melt before I say anything about that. But she has... She, we've been talking about doing something with this class. I don't know what it is. Um, okay, and guys, so I mentioned that, that she did this something interesting here. All right. And I'll, I'll, I'll just describe it. Okay, so here she's got a section of the tubing, and she's going to cook it back. And then she's going to open it up to, like, a flared cup. And instead of, like, your traditional disc flip where you would draw on something and, and then treat it almost like, you know, after you do an implosion, like a hollow implosion, you know, and then you got to cut it off the face or whatever, you know, blow, blow it out real thin, whatever, and then cut it off or, you know, you can... There's a lot of ways to open that thing up and cut it off, right? But that's the way this thing has been done. You know, you do your drawing or whatever, and then you cut it off and make it into a disc. And then that, that disc then gets sealed into a cup that's opened up, right? That's like Yushin, all these cats we've seen. That's how everybody's done it. What she did, and I'm calling it a seal flip. I don't know if she has a name for it. You'd have to ask her. Um, Like I said, this is... uh. New, new new ground i've never seen anybody do it this way but hey, so she, she what she Sorry. opened this <laughs> cup and then instead of like i said uh, opening up the the image one and then sealing it into the cup she sealed this cup over the image and then blew the the rest of it off and then cleaned that up so that it was already sealed into like its home essentially and then blew, blew that off and cleaned that the material up. And it's just a totally different approach, one that I've never seen. And just one, you know, to think about. Tuck it away in your mental catalog of shit that can be done. You don't necessarily have to cut your disc out and then seal it into something. You can seal something over it and then clean up the stuff from there. It leaves you with a little bit more to clean up on the finished disc, right? But if it's all the same color, and you can kind of clean it up and then cook the rest of it back, nobody really ever has to know, right? And I think that's a bit of the secret sauce here, is that it's all this striking red, so the colors match. So, th therein is the deal. So, I thought that was really cool. Um, I, I was in the middle of filming somebody else. So I didn't actually film when she was doing that, but I was watching it out of the corner of my eye like, oh, fuck, I should be filming this. But it is, you, you can't do it all. I was making this joke about I need to get blinders like a horse because all the competitors were so close. Their stations were very close, so I could see what, like, three or four people were doing, so I knew everything I was missing at once. I was like, oh, this is maddening. Gotta give a shout out to Danny Parker and his crew who set up the uh, live glass filling area. You guys oh, yeah. killed it, man. Oh, yeah. Really, everything was super clean. 
Well, yeah. He, he did a great job, and he was constantly making sure everybody had everything that they needed. And then he made yeah, an yeah. incredibly sick fucking fab egg piece with the fucking... That was him, right? Yeah. yeah. That sick fucking fab egg with the... It was like that had a ball rig section through it. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. Um, yeah, he, he was all over it for us. Big shout out to Danny. Yeah, there's going to be a whole section, you guys, of like advanced plumbing. Because all these guys were making these sick recycler type pieces. And they all had different types of drains and returns and all that. A lot of them oh, had yeah. this thing where they open the hole, attach the, the tube for the return. And then, you know, then heat it and curve it around and do a Jesus seal. We got a whole bunch of that. We got homie doing like a wormhole style thing through the ball rig in the, in the fab egg. Excuse me. It's really cool. And then, yeah, so here's Windstar's piece, that one. She got, like, a samurai torch and an incredible prize package from Bethlehem. One of the more heartwarming things about this show was that uh, Kate from Bethlehem was there. And Willie from GTT was there. And they were totally hanging out and kicking it and just fulfilling my fantasy of... That was my, great. My, yeah, my torch sponsor friends becoming homies. <laughs> I really, um, not to make it about me or nothing, it's just I love that, that all these different companies come together and some of them even compete, but they, they don't mind that, you know, I put I put positive light on, on the, their competitors and such. And, I don't know, that means a lot. Like, they, they'd rather you see more, you know, than try and be like, oh, well, you can't do this, or, you know, or fight that, fight the fight the love, man. They're not, they're, mm -hmm. they're, none of them are doing that. It's beautiful. Um, and it makes all of this possible. So big shout outs to these companies pitching in. And guys, this, if you weren't with us from the very beginning, I, th I threw in these fun time lapses because I thought these clouds were beautiful. Um, this is Madison. This is where this event was. It's a very beautiful city. I've never been. I was like, oh, wow, this is not, not what I expected. I didn't know what to expect, but I didn't expect a city completely surrounded by water. And the weather was beautiful. People are all over the place, you know, paddleboarding, kayaking, boating, canoeing. One cat was just swimming. And this is the terrace. This this is where the event was held. This beautiful terrace up there with flowers and gardens. And it's overlooking the water. Apparently designed by Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright. It's, they have an out. They have like a rooftop bar up there. It was open yeah. on Friday night with like a free funk band playing up there and everything oh, on the really? roof. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know about that. But this is this is it. It's just a really, really, really picturesque city. Beautiful, beautiful spot. Great food. Everything about this place was really nice. I look forward to returning. I hope some of you guys out there come out for this thing. You know, if if. If you want to come out and, and sling some glass, great. If not, if you want to come out and do the more social side of it, the freaking fan party was whew, awesome. Um, the competition was amazing. The show was great. You know, I there was I I like I said I was focused on the competition, so that's that's another uh, discussion. Um, I, I but man, it was fuck. The whole thing was just such a beautiful time. It was. And it was great. You know, the the show was great. After after hours was great. I, I can't I can't recommend this place enough. I was like, fuck yeah, we're adding Madison to the dank cities list or whatever. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Dave, thank you so much for joining us and and making this show Thanks possible. For having me, man. Yeah. Big shout outs to uh, to Ross, man, the the homie who helped put this show on and and kept this party going in Madison. Absolutely. Yeah, it means a lot. Um. This whole yeah, we're thing really was... glad to have something going in the Midwest still, man. It's uh, That was the main goal here, was to keep a, a wholesale show in the Midwest accessible for artists and buyers in our area. And, uh, yeah, we're yeah. looking forward to doing it some more. Well, I think it was a success. Um, yeah, it was a great I, time. I, I really do, man. Yeah, there's so many cool people there. Shout-outs to the ASGS homies that came out, man. Mike yeah, that in the was Midwest. Great. Yeah, dude, there was, so, there was so many cool cats. The Melt homies were out there. I mean, the North Star homies were out there. The Boro Derby homies were, ho homies were out there. Gosh, I got to stop with this. That's, that's, this. that's the second yeah, time. I got to gotta <laughs> stop on that. <laughs> <laughs> we're a bad Freudian slip there or something. Um, yeah, but for real, you guys, um, yeah, what a great time. That was really fucking sweet. I, I um, Man. Now, now, guys, I think you all know what we do at this time in the show. Um Man, where where are the mugs? Get me the mugs, Carrie. Where? 
I think they're in the kitchen. You want me to go get one? Please get a mug. All right, I'll go get one. We got. Uh, <laughs> let me let me see if I could find a. Uh, there was there was a funny. Whoa! Quiet down, computer. Trying to trying to interrupt the show. Um, gosh, I, I I I'm trying to find the thing. Maybe see if we can find this. Hmm. I don't know. I think it may be hard to find right now. But suffice it to say, Roar sponsored the coffee. And when they sponsored the coffee, they provided free mugs. And I grabbed a bunch of them. And we already did a giveaway for that in the group, which you guys may remember. Um, but we're going to do another one. So we definitely have a Roar coffee mug. And then me and Carrie went to this veterinarian show. I don't know, where's, I don't know where all that stuff went, but we have like a cool hippo stress thing. You don't know where all what was? Carrie, where's the veterinarian giveaway stuff? To your right. <laughs> to my right, what? Oh, it's in my room, this is awesome, okay, all right. It's right, right there, yep. <laughs> check it, look what I got. This is tight, this is tight, okay, check it out. What, you got a hippo, a stress hippo, it's Fiona. I know glass blowing is stressful, <laughs> so we got Fiona here for you guys. There you go. She may be flammable, though. Maybe flammable. Be with that. <laughs> yeah. This is from Hippo Veterinarian Software, hippomanager.com. Whatever. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. And then, hey, yo, they're throwing out numbers right now, and they shouldn't be throwing out numbers, right? They should throw out numbers, but I didn't say, but be, they should be numbers 1 through 200. Okay. All if right. If you're doing anything other than that, you're fucking up. And then we've got some Thornwell. It's a ruler, yo. What? Wait, whoa. It's got a button. It's just wild, man. Swag has never been better. Okay. It, we got those things that you put on your phone and then you can hold the phone. I got two of them shits. <laughs> and? We got lots of, of odor stops here. Stickers, some boot that was like slinging this odor neutralizing product. Whatever. De-skunker. De-skunker. Shout out <laughs> to the de-skunker folks. <laughs> yes. de you got to de-skunk. You got to de-skunk, y'all. Y'all wooks out there got to de-skunk. And then, man, I don't know what the deal is, but like, man, a lot of promotional things be doing lip balm. They all think everybody has dry lips, so... <laughs> and uh all right carrie can you show them the, the the mugs do you have the mug what boom there they are these are roar mugs y'all and if you're my age like roar was the fucking shit it was like whoa my god they have these glass on glass joints this is amazing this is new technology that's how it felt back back then for me okay so it looks like we have a couple of mugs um Put your numbers in. Give them shits away. Give it away. Give it away. Give it away now. Hey, what's up here? So, somebody wins what? all this? Are you giving away to multiple people here? What are you we're doing? gonna we're gonna probably pick a few winners. And how it'll yeah. go is like a couple people will get mugs, and I don't even know. There was like well, two. Well, of most why don't of you stuff. go ahead and throw it? Throw a pound of boro batch in there. Ooh. What? Pound of boro batch in there. Yeah, for maybe our boro batch. Throw a pound of color in there. Oh man, that's too nice, nice. dude. Fuck yeah. yeah. All right. So we'll pick That's a fourth like a grand winner. Prize winner. <laughs> no, no. Well, let's there just do go. that for somebody else since ABR will ship that out or whatever exactly. you guys have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Um, and then, so yeah, dude, we could totally got some fun prize pack. I've got enough to do like at least some, some third prize will get a sticker pack. But I've got at least two of the rulers, two of these things. There's only one hippo. The hippo is part of the grand prize pack. We have some corning things. These are like, uh, don't ask me what this motherfucker's doing, but it's something to do with glass. So you got a corning pin with their magnets, or two of them. <laughs> They're magnets. One of them's a pin, but whatever. I'm gonna save those for another time. I'll we'll have to um, have Eric explain. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, dude. The, most of them had like a thing in a burner, but this guy's just—he's holding something that looks like a divining rod or something. I don't know what it is. He's trying to find water. Um, yeah. So, whatever. We'll pick a pick a few winners and then we'll pick another winner for a fucking thing of color that's hot um i really appreciate that all right it looks like all the numbers are coming in 
Hey, Mike, Champs Orlando is not a live competition, right? That's no, they're it's doing not. that like I think there's a <laughs> post on there something about an alligator. I don't know. Yeah. Competition, yeah. Nino Glass cracking me up. This is Mike's computer starts an update mid show. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, no. All right. You guys go to Orlando? You guys going down there? Was that no um yeah. that one's like right after uh melt, isn't it? Uh yeah. I, well, yeah. We're literally like like a week yeah. after, I think. Yeah, yeah is so that seems to, or... Yeah. Um no oh, what I'm passing? Yeah, exactly. What I'm doing after melt, um I moved and everything, but my car wasn't ready yet. Like there was it needed some service before it was gonna be ready to drive. Uh and anyways, it's been ready. So I'm going to drive down and get my car and then do pipe yeah, classic can. and then uh, drive my car back to Nebraska and then I'll be able to like drive around and stuff. <laughs> That'd be good. It, it would be good. be good. It's all good. I mean, <laughs> all I do is just sit in my room and edit. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. But and that's fine. Um, yeah. But anyways, no, I wish I could do that Orlando chance. But if homies, if you're in Florida and you want an opportunity to go sling some glass or just come check out a fun show with a shitload of um, heady peeps, excuse me, that that's the one. Um, yeah. Let's see. Oh, guys, oh, I'm totally criminal that we didn't talk about this earlier. Um, don't sleep tomorrow. Salt live at, on Corning. Um Pull this up. Yeah, I saw that earlier. That's that's not to be missed. Don't fuck around on that, guys. That's uh, that's tomorrow. So, yeah. All right, I'll be right back. Get your last of your numbers in, and then we're gonna pick these things. We're gonna do this shit. All right. Well, numbers are rolling in. Oh yeah, that salt demo tomorrow. That's gonna be fun. Yeah, that'll be good. And you know, he's he's a, you can learn so much. Just from watching the way he works. Oh, absolutely. He's a great guy. He's, so he's up there right now? Is that what they're saying? I, don't know. I believe so, or it might have been filmed yeah, prior. Okay. I know he's been, I think yeah. he's been there. He went for, no, it says live stream demo. So yeah. All right, cool. Must be. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I saw him up there at the gas conference in Corning. I love it when gas is at Corning. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty amazing. It was they they were heavy on the flame workers that year. I think they were trying to woo the woo the pipe makers that year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's nice to see that uh, presence growing at gas a little bit anyway. Oh absolutely, yeah. All right, all right. Are all these numbers in? Looks like it. Maybe another ten seconds. All right. Got some people clickety clacking already. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one through two hundred. Here we go. I see a lot of numbers. Oh, we got it. We're gonna pick a bunch of fucking winners. This is tight. Yeah, Nino says no Joe Pete demo. I don't know. They're they're taking their time on that one. These things happen. Sometimes it takes a week or two. Um. All right, here we go. Let's do this. Clickety, 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 click. 33. Fuck yeah, the COE of borosilicate glass. If somebody didn't pick that, there you go. Yeah, you, you, you messed up. You should have picked 33. Nobody picked 33. That's I don't terrible. See one. There's a 133. No, no. What's Steven S? What is going on? Yeah, here? he picked quite a few numbers. I'm yeah. not sure where his first one was. Gangster, you get one number. I don't know what all this. Yeah. Craziness is. Um, Just pick them all. <laughs> four prizes. I want a number for every prize. Come okay, well, well, who's the closest? I'm seeing a 37 from Pete Alvarez. I'm seeing a 31 from SED. The that's, homie. That's, that's, closer, that's, huh? that's it. That's it. I think that's it. All right, SED. That's you, baby. That's that's the grand prize. So which which one is the grand prize? Is that the hippo plus? It does. Yeah, he's got the hippo. He gets the cup. He gets a fucking all the other bullshit I was showing earlier. This is from the pet show. All right. So, all right. So the the boro batch, the pound of boro batch. That's the uh, the last prize. That's the very that. last one. All right. That's the very what last one. What just went first? What the first person win there? 
Day one. Hippo and a mug and they some, won the Roar nice. mug. Yeah, and you know I'll find some stickers and all sorts of fun stuff to throw in that mug. Yeah. Y'all know. Yeah, Roar hook, hooked up the coffee and the mugs. It was great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, that they was, really did. Um, that was nice. In fact, I think I might might just try and find that footage for us real quick. Because you guys got to see Had the, the uh, it was Them and like Rehab Glass there. there had pastry bar, popcorn bar. They had it kicking over there That's pretty what, much oh, yeah, the whole was, show. That was good. That's exactly <laughs> what I was about to show y'all. <laughs> it was, uh, they had the popcorn bar popping. Um, yeah, that was nice. Yeah, let's... Uh, All these different course. shakers with flavors. That was it's pretty sweet. Yeah, totally. I'm about to about to just pause before we pick another winner here and find this fucking thing. Got to stay to see the popcorn bar. <laughs> all right, where is yeah, it? all that stuff is available for the venue, and they do a really good job there. I just feel like the venue is really nice, man. It's just a, uh, you know, what a great room. It was, yeah, it was fucking awesome. There's quite a few things I could show you guys. You know, I will I will show y'all something random here. If you're ever in Kansas City and you go to Char Bar, <laughs> get these crazy hush puppies. They're filled with like grits and and man, I don't know. They were amazing. <laughs> they were at, as seen on on Food Network or something. Don't mess around. And then if you're in a few different cities, Cluster Truck. We're in the. Fully like Grandpa Mike's <laughs> slideshow. I forget where we got this, but we got the weirdest creme brulee. It had a bunch of like, uh, oh, stuff. right, Beer Kitchen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. The Westport neighborhood in Kansas City has some of my favorite restaurants. This is uh, at, at, at the Kansas City, what, what museum was this, Carrie? The Nelson Atkins. All right, and this is the golf, it's like a mini golf art course. Simply Glasses in Kansas City, he says. Oh, really? We should have linked yeah. up, dog. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why it's not loading these pictures, but... Well, someone, somebody threw a glass event out there in Kansas City, a 420 event this year, I thought. Hmm. Hmm. I was telling Mike, I only know a couple places that have glass blowing studios, and that would be... Uh, public glass, I think it is. Sarah Sally Legrand's and uh, Moon Marble. But other than that, I can't think of any. I have to check with that. I'm pretty sure that's where it was. It was new, I think. Maybe a smoke shop, or or was it a glass? It shop? might have been. I think it was a, a smoke shop sponsored deal. Okay. Oh, here it is. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. So I'm talking about you guys. Oh yeah, <laughs> biggest roar. This is the hot yeah, shit. man. That's what I'm talking about. This this was better than the veterinarian. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, this is why there's this is why there's mugs for you guys because I was just grabbing them and filling them with popcorn <laughs> as if that was like what you're supposed to do. Like, boom, these are for being the homies. <laughs> So, all right. So let's pick another winner for one of these mugs. Let's watch no that again. No new numbers, though, guys. No new numbers. Pencil bites. <laughs> yeah, this is it. Good. Okay. Oh, damn, they're making me hungry. I cooked these tamales before the show, and then I totally and, forgot about it. They're still yeah, sitting they're in, in the, the microwave. Yeah, they're in the refrigerator now. Are you? Oh, really? It carries on to me. I <laughs> <laughs> oh, the things she discovers. Um. <laughs> Go peep these things, y'all. A Taglia Tool Company. Look at this. It's like a necking tool that has all these different accessories you can slide in and attach to the sides. All these different Yeah, plates. man. Those, those are my homies. Alex and Clint, man. Those guys are killing it. New tools are made here in Indiana. Fuck yeah. Awesome. It really, I thought this was really neat. Like They got different options for the, the mounted reamers on the side, all that. Fucking beautiful. And you can get custom stuff done, like any kind of anything that can be made to fit in that insert. Like they're gonna make a flat top, like Marver, you know, things for like a rolling Marver. Anything you can come up with, you can have them. You know, you could have some any kind of insert made for that thing. And hmm. They'll figure it out. Killer. All right, all right, all right. I promised uh, some giveaways. Let's not turn this into all that, but. <laughs> 
I did want to just show you guys that, oh, that yeah. popcorn area. That, that, that was that was awesome. All right, here we go. Clickety clack. 120. Mm -hmm. Oh, it showed up. Well, Gusto I see. A, I see a 120. Yeah, I see that too. Gusto glass, you're the fucking homie, dude. You, you, uh, that's you, baby. We got a roar mug for you. There all this, you go. All this stupid shit from the vet show. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Free shit. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. That'll be that'll be for uh, that's just an HBO uh, commercial waiting to happen. <laughs> <laughs> nice. totally, totally. <laughs> all right let's do this let's pick a third winner i got a sticker pack or whatever for this winner i don't have a roar mug for this winner because i'm down to, to my roar mugs but clickety clack <laughs> 200 <laughs> oh who did that did somebody Damn. do 200 oh, there's two of them i see oh well, somebody messed oh, up boy. oh no the first one is me saying one through 200 so... yeah and then the other one is the character <laughs> limit Oh, no 200. So, let's see. I mean, why is it making noise? I muted that site. Oh, 198. Let's see. Yeah, and uh, every time this JRRCC -R -R guy talked, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, no. Okay. What? Oh, come on, man. I have the site muted. It's not supposed to be doing this. Well, I don't hear anything. Yeah, well, everybody else does. So. Oh, <laughs> well... <laughs> All right. Look. Yeah, but I don't. <laughs> One eighty-eight. Robert Howard. Yeah. Is that there it? You know. Is that really the highest? Yep. It's the highest I see. Okay. Okay. One eighty-eight. Someone got close. So One seventy-seven, I think, way down there. But. Yeah. All right. I do see the one eighty-seven. Eighty-eight. I see one eighty-eight. I think that's it. Closest I have to 200. I'm sorry, Stephen S. actually claimed a range of 175 to 200, so I think that goes to him. <laughs> no, <I'm just> playing. <laughs> <laughs> just, all right. just block all those off for me. <laughs> all right, all right. So all Robert right. gets the, uh, the remaining of the vet swag. No, I mean, I'm gonna, that's like a sticker and, pack. And, and sticker pack. No, just a sticker pack. It's a okay, sticker, sticker pack. pack. Third, third place right. is just a sticker pack. All right, and yo, this one is for a pound of some Boro Batch colors. It's tight. Let's do this. Y'all ready? What? What? Just, mm -hmm. Something just fell. Somebody's prize just fell. And it's now <laughs> broken. I'm just kidding. All right. like an aluminum can to me. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. yo, yeah. it looks like Carrie threw in these ring pops. Oh yeah, yeah. That's so right. I guess I guess that's you guys good. get ring pops that's too. Candy. These were from Maddie White. These are special. Oh boy, that's dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the bearer of this ring has special powers. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's why we're giving them away. So no, just play. <laughs> All right. Um, this one, this is the Boro Batch. This one's for the Boro Batch. Oh shit, the homie Caleb says, oh shit, Boro Batch are the nicest motherfuckers. Word. Oh yeah. Alright, alright, here we go. Clickety, clickety, clack. 185 is getting... Oh. Damn, that's so similar to the other one. What happened? You can't win twice in one night, so let me just clarify if that if the same person is going to win. Alright, so I have a 186, but I'm... Oh, there is? No, wait. No, wait I see 187. That's my grafe. Yeah, there's a 7. Where's... Do we have a... We don't... We have a 186, really? There's... No, no. It was... It was me being confused. Oh. Um, so I think that's... Then, that's the homie. Mike. Yeah, 183 was one of the numbers that Stephen yes. Acid picked. But, oh, really? Oh, yeah, But it no. was like... The third, at least. Yeah, third in a, third in a series of numbers. <laughs> yeah, we All right, can't. So we can't do who, that. Who's the winner? One eighty-seven. I think it might be one eighty-seven. Unless I yeah. graph the grand, grand prize winner. That's so. not the grand prize. That's the that's the Boro batch. No, I know it's like the grand grand prize. I mean, a pound of Boro batch or a couple of mugs. Which do you prefer? I would take the mugs, but that's okay. You know. <laughs> <laughs> <Come on. laughs> Depends which color. Yeah. <laughs> no, right, no. So I want to be sure Graf, though. He needs to hit up 
hit up Dave, or I guess he can hit up yeah. Mike if he doesn't know how to get in touch with Dave. Can yeah, then tell get him. In touch with Dave. Yeah, just uh, he should just hit me up um, on Instagram at ABR Imagery. We'll get him all set up. Oh uh, yeah, excellent. All right, that's what's up. Well, guys, um, that shit was tight. Congrats to the winners. Sorry to the losers, but you know it is what it is. Didn't didn't we all win? With the friends we made along the way. We all we're not displaying. Spend, <laughs> spend an evening together. Yeah, no, for real. Thanks to everybody who joined us. Um, let me make this random selection business go away here by clicking buttons until it all goes away. And yeah, um, yeah, Dave, uh, thank you so much for joining us and telling us yeah, about thank it. you guys. Yeah, dude. And then thank you for your work with fam, man. The the show was fucking just such a nice time. I really, really did enjoy it. And I can't wait to share more footage and all that. This shit was great. Thank oh, you, yeah, man. Yeah, fuck yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming again. We really appreciate it. Love uh, to have you guys out every time, man. It's great what you do, sharing all uh, this footage with everybody. We, It's a good thing, man. Keep it up. Thank you, brother. I appreciate yeah, that, man. Yeah, it was a good that, time. That means a lot. Thanks for having us. Carrie, thank you for joining us. You're, you're the best. I really appreciate Thanks. you. Thank you for filming that whole segment of the show uh, with, with uh, Terry Sharp. That was all your footage. Pleasure. Yeah, and Terry. Yeah, it's fun um, to film. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you for being here. Um, and thanks to everybody who tuned in. I really appreciate you guys. It's, that's why I get to keep doing this and you know, why we get to keep having this party. Y'all are the fucking best. I really hope you all have a great rest of your week. Don't forget about that salt stream. We'll definitely do like a watch party on that tomorrow morning. And hell yeah, have a good rest of your night, everybody. Take care until next time. Absolutely.